All right, so we have finished making up our substrate. Now it's time to sterilize everything. So we'll wheel our sterilizers out and start loading up our, loading these up with our blocks. So yeah, I have these things on wheels and it makes it really easy to move them around. So yeah, we have three of these uh, atmospheric steam sterilizers. So when we're running all of them at the same time, we can sterilize about 18, 16 to 1800 pounds of raw substrate at once. So it really helps with our bulk, bulk uh, substrate production and keep us flowing. So yeah, we have our sterilizers. If you wanted to get a peek in there, we just have a, a heating element with some water and then a, a float valve. It hooks up to our water connection and automatically refills as w with water as needed. And we uh, basically just put all of our blocks in here. Uh, this one can fit 63 bags per, per unit. So get quite a bit of substrate in each one. 600 pounds of substrate per drum. We'll just load them in there with a, kind of like a, a little pattern. Placing each block over the holes so the steam can penetrate efficiently. You can sterilize a, a few different ways. One is pressure steam sterilizing. So this is an atmospheric steam sterilizer. We'll just load the substrate in here and it's hooked up to a PID controller. So this will monitor our temperature as well as the time. So this will cook for, depending on the recipe, 12 to 14 hours. Uh, after which this will automatically shut off the, the heating element and it'll start cool down. I'll let it cool for about two days. Then that, at that point we can load it, uh, unload it into our laboratory, allow it to cool further, then inoculate it with a fresh mushroom mycelium inoculation being placing a fresh grown out mushroom culture whether it be grain spawn or whatnot into our sterilized bags for colonization so that's about it for for this system we were using the pressure steam sterilization uh, all american pressure cookers for quite a while this just allows us to do a lot more substrate at once all right so this is our all american 41 and a half quart pressure steam sterilizer. So this is a really heavy duty uh, piece of equipment. Works great. So this is really useful for an at home cultivator. So we have a, a nice chamber that we can load our substrate in. And I also use these electrical box, uh, boxes. Place those at the bottom of our sterilizer. And just put that plate right there. Then at that point, you're gonna fill it with water up until this line. I use distilled water only. And uh, with this setup, we could put probably about four blocks in here at a time. Or if you're doing five pound blocks, about eight to nine. So we just load them up like that. At that point, we'll grab our lid. We'll uh, put this cord right here off to the side. And then we'll just lock it up like that. And then at that point, or at this point, you'll just tighten your lid up, making sure that the spaces around here are all even. Then we'll just tighten it up. So these things are uh, readily available online. They're just a heavy duty gas burner. And if you're doing this, you want to do it in like an open air space so you're not breathing any, any fumes in. So we'll just put our burners like right there and we'll let the pressure sterilizer vent for about five minutes. Once you start seeing steam escaping from the chamber, let it continue to run for about five minutes. You're gonna basically vent any trapped air from inside of your pressure cooker. After five minutes, turn it off and let the pressure gauge travel up to 15 PSI. And once it hits 15 PSI, again, you're gonna open up uh, the stop cop right here 
and uh, vent your chamber all the way down to zero PSI. Once it hits zero, close, the, close your chamber, let it hit 15 PSI, and then pressure sterilize for two hours. After two hours, you can just turn it off, let these cool in your sterilizer overnight, and then the next day, just unload it in front of your flow hood or into a steel air box and go ahead and conduct your inoculation. So this is a good way to do it. We, uh, we had six of these things, so we could do like 24 blocks of these 10 pounds or 36 seven pound blocks a day. So this is an atmospheric steam sterilizer. So this is gonna take longer than our pressure steam sterilizer because number one, it's not gonna be getting at uh, 250 degree temperatures that are under 15 PSI. So this will be cooking uh, atmospheric pressure. So we'll cook at around 206 to 210 degrees for 12 to 14 hours. That way we get effective sterilization and we don't experience any contamination. We're also cooking a lot, a lot bigger, uh, a lot more substrate at once. It's gonna take a little bit longer to reach those core temperatures we're looking for. For these ones, we're gonna want it to be around 207 to 210 degrees for basically majority of the sterilization time. It usually takes about, about three to four hours to get up to core temp, and then we'll just hold it there for about 10 hours. So I found that that effectively sterilizes all of our substrate and we don't experience any contamination at this point. I think atmospheric sterilization is great. And uh, it's really a, really a good way to bulk up your production. Uh, for a cost, of, you know, cost effective. So with a large scale mushroom cultivation that involves the sterilization of like sawdust that's supplemented, we're growing out shiitake and a lot of exotic mushrooms like maitake and piapini and chestnut and whatnot. And a lot of people ask if uh, there's a way not to use plastic to cultivate the mushrooms. And you're very limited uh, not using plastic bags that are developed for mushroom cultivation. So you can, uh, with oyster mushrooms, you can kind of get away with using reusable containers and you know buckets with holes drilled in them or laundry baskets. You can get creative and use you know all kinds of stuff. You can also use like reusable jars, like mason jars, but the yield's not that good if you're just doing a quart jar of sawdust. You'll probably get just a few mushrooms. So it's really hard to get away from the plastic bag being that we can sterilize our substrate in here and then affect it, you know, open it up in the laboratory in front of our flow hood and easily inoculate it. With like buckets and reusable containers, it's really hard to effectively sterilize them. And then with strains like shiitake, where we remove the bag and they fruit on all sides of the container, it's really hard to, to do that, so. They also have developed like things like biodegradable bags, but there's, talk about them just breaking down into more microplastics, which might not be good either. So hopefully there's something that changes soon and we get a biodegradable, truly biodegradable bag. But for the meantime, uh, the bags are the biggest waste product in the mushroom growing industry. There's one species I know for sure that's been shown to break down plastics, but it's really, um, I mean, I guess that'd be take some infrastructure to develop a system for your farm where you can uh, inoculate all your waste plastics maybe like once a month or something like that. So that's something that's uh, definitely being looked into and worth more research. Uh, a mushroom that can break down plastics. So all your petri dishes and plastic bags and all those other tools that are made of plastic that we use to cultivate mushrooms would, yeah, definitely we need a, a way to recycle them effectively. So mushrooms could be the answer for that too. Also, when you get to the scale of making 600 to 1,000 bags a week, it gets harder to, to be able to like wash all those reusable containers every week. And could you imagine washing 600 reusable buckets every week before you inoculate or before you load them up? So the bags make it easy, are super effective. But if you're just growing personal for yourself, then yeah, use reusable containers uh, as much as you can. Compared to like our spawn sterilization process, we utilize our all-American pressure steam sterilizers, uh, sterilizers for our spawn. Uh, so we can effectively autoclave them at the 250 degrees that's necessary. 
We'll do that for about five hours. For grain spawn, it's highly nutritious, much more nutritious than our production block. So we have to be a lot more careful with our whole process, ensuring that uh, every step of the way we're completely clean and um, sterilizing properly because if a contamination pops up with our grain spawn, then it will make its way through all of our production blocks, which would be horrible, just a waste of time and work. So yeah, we do utilize a higher standard of clean work and sterility f when working with grain spawn. Uh, we have utilized the atmospheric steam sterilizing for grain spawn in the past. And we can do big batches at once in here. And honestly, it works just as good as long as you're sterilizing for enough time. And once you're done sterilizing, we immediately roll into our lab. So a cool down can be done in front of the flow hoods. Uh, so with the with these with these uh, atmospheric sterilizers, we definitely make sure that cool down is done in front of the flow hoods in the clean room. With the pressure steam sterilizers, we can usually let the spawn cool down in the sterilizer overnight, and then open opening it up in front of our flow hood as it's cooled. So it's a little bit of a little little differences between spawn and, and substrate sterilization. So we we'll get this last sterilizer loaded up. So most common contaminants seen are like green molds, like Aspergillus or Trichoderma, which would be like a fuzzy green mold. And uh, it starts out kind of looking like mycelium. And once it sporulates, it'll turn green. So it spor the mycelium actually produces its own spores. Another common, common one will be like a black mold or a cobweb mold. You can also see uh, a lot of different colors pop up. I mean, the most common ones I've seen in my career are uh, just green molds, like trichoderma and uh, aspergillus. You can also get like a yeast uh, growth, which would be like a bacteria. Those are really common in grain spawn, like a bacterial wet spot mold or bacterial wet spot contamination. And then like a cobweb mold or a green mold. So the whole process can be overwhelming at first, but just take baby steps and eventually it just becomes like second nature. Um, just start off learning the basics. Don't try to shoot too far from where you're at. And yeah, it can be really, really fun and not too overwhelming as long as you just take in the, the right, am right amount of information at the right stage in your learning process. So starting from like the beginning stages of the mushroom life cycle or even starting from a mushroom grow kit can give you kind of like some of the basic ideas and fundamentals of mushroom cultivation that'll help steer you in the right direction and get you on the right path for success. And then you can always, uh, as you begin to get more familiar with the technique, uh, with cultivation, you can uh, kind of like plan and order like spawn, you can buy spawn that's already made for you in a lab and then use that to do your inoculations and kind of just learn at your own pace. I mean, seeing a lot of contamination for your first time could like turn a lot of, turn some people off to the, to the hobby, but just don't give up, keep trying. Uh, failure is all part of the success, so you're going to fail, you're going to get contamination. It's going to happen. It's just, uh, it's inevitable. So, so just uh, if it does happen, just utilize it as a learning process and get better as you go. But every grower gets some kind of contamination or fails miserably at one point in their career. It just happens. Just making sure these bags are folded properly as we put them in. They're looking great. So now the sterilizers have been loaded up. It's time to go ahead and get them sterilized. Get them sterilizing. 630 pounds of fresh substrate coming through. We'll just plug this in. Then we'll take our water and before we turn on our sterilizer, always make we always make sure our water is turned on first. Just because you, you don't want to turn on your sterilizer without 
we're forgetting to turn on your water, you'll end up boiling dry, basically breaking your sterilizer. And then we'll hook up our temperature probe. And go ahead and turn on the sterilizer. And it's at uh, 207 degrees. Right now it's at 70 degrees. We'll go ahead and turn on the heating element. And now the temperature will be uh, begin to rise. Once it hits that target temperature that we have set, then our timer will kick on. It'll start timing the process. Once it hits to the desired uh, time that we have set, it will shut off. So all I have to do is come in and unhook it the next morning and basically wait for the substrate to be cool enough to start unloading into our laboratory next door. We'll grab the next sterilizer and do the same thing over again. And we get that nice and tight right there so the water connection doesn't have any leaks. Switch it to on. So this sterilizer's been hooked up. We got the power onto it. We got the water connected. Now we'll just put in our key, turn it on. Turn our element on. And that's it for our sterilization process. Definitely come, uh, you know, it's definitely a bit of a change compared to watching the All Americans on top of the high powered gas burners and trying to play with the flame. So this, this is really nice being able to just set it, forget it, walk away, come back tomorrow, and the, everything will be done. We're also using an exhaust in this room to basically push out any steam and hot air. So that really helps keep the room dry and keep it cool while we're sterilizing. This is our sterilization process.